Well, guys, a uh, sad day for all true Madridistas as the news of Zidane leaving Real Madrid are confirmed. All I can say is thank you, Zidane. What's up guys? Welcome back to El Merengue Cule, a video today that a lot of you have been asking for and obviously I wanted to make a proper video about it, not just a, a video that I was winging. Um, but like I, like I like you guys already know, Zidane has officially announced that he is leaving Real Madrid and this is this is super super sad news for, for any true Madridista out there as we know that Zidane is frankly and in my opinion the best manager that Real Madrid has ever had uh, to our history so far. We're gonna talk a little more about everything he accomplished here at Real Madrid. But uh, before before starting with that, I just wanna say Zidane, thank you once again for everything that you have done in the two spells that you had with us as manager and also whenever you were with us as a, uh, as a player. I hope Florentino is able to accommodate some sort of job for you so you don't actually leave Real Madrid and you, you stay somewhere behind pulling strings, maybe helping out with transfers, helping the club in some other form, because Real Madrid without you is not the same. You are part of all Madridistas' hearts, even the ones that shat on you through your hard times, that never believed in you, that said that all you did was just put players out there and hope for the best. All these play, all these fans out there that, that once put all this BS on you will, will soon realize everything that you, that you brought to us. So, you know, really, really disappointed to, to see Zidane leave. And I feel like I'm talking as if uh, I'm talking literally to him, but, uh, but this is kind of how I feel. Um, last, yesterday, actually, during the Europa League final stream for whoever was in there, we, we quickly started talking about the news as Fabrizio Romano, the, 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 the reporter, the news reporter that, that was ultimately the one that first released the news that Zidane was going to be leaving Real Madrid. He actually released that, he put that tweet out just at the time that we were streaming. And so you guys kind of, for those of you that were in the stream, and actually the stream is up if you guys want to go watch it. My, my full live reaction of, of me seeing that Zidane was leaving Real Madrid is, is actually on there, captured right during the stream. And, and it's actually, for those of you that didn't see it, it's literally Ricky. Uh, he gets a notification on his, on his Apple Watch and he says uh, Fabrizio Romano just, just confirmed that Zidane is for sure going to be leaving. And in that, I'm like, what? And I just reach over and I'm like, let me see that. And, and I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But uh, I mean, we did see it coming. You know, we did see it coming. Okay, but now let's go ahead and jump on to the titles, all the accomplishments that Zidane won while at Real Madrid during his two spells. And that is none other than 11 titles. 11 titles, which is the second most that any manager has won at Real Madrid. Second to Miguel Munoz, who won 14. But I want to explain why, in my opinion, Zidane is still the best manager at, that Real Madrid has ever seen. Uh, let's, let's quickly go through the, through the titles that Zidane won. Of course, Zidane will always be known as the only, the only manager in the history of football to have won three consecutive Champions Leagues. Zinedine Zidane did that. Three consecutive Champions Leagues. On top of that, we have two La Ligas, uh, two UEFA Super Cups, two Spanish Super Cups, and two Club World Cups. He wasn't able to get that third Club World Cup because if you guys remember, whenever he departed the first time, uh, that was right after we won that third Champions League. So he was not the one that competed for that third Club World Cup. And that was actually Solari who ended up winning it as well. But with that being said, Zidane ended up winning 166 games out of 251 games he played or he uh, he managed. And that is a 66% win ratio, which, you know, uh, I mean, if you tell me, oh yeah, you have a 66% win ratio, it doesn't sound amazing, but guys, it, it truly is amazing. Out of those games, he only lost 36 of them. And and it's, it's, uh, it's honestly uh, an insane amount. He has the best... Uh, game to to trophy win ratio that any manager at Real Madrid has ever had. He basically won a, a, a trophy every 23 games he played in. Every 23 games he won a title. Unbelievable. Completely unbelievable. First was also Miguel Munoz who managed 605 games, which is a pretty damn amount. But whenever you consider that he, he managed more than double the games of Zidane and yet only won three more titles, that's when you really start to see how good Zidane just was. So, like I said, he will always be remembered as the man who won the three consecutive Champions Leagues. 
and, and the man who was able to be successful even when all odds were against him. Guys, you remember, this season, there was a point during, uh, I believe it was like January, February, when our squad list for a whole solid like three weeks to a month were only, only had 13 to 11 first team players on the squad list. He would go out to these games with more than half of the squad out due to injuries, due to COVID, and he still managed to win. That is actually one of the times when, when we had our, our one of our best winning streaks. Yes, the wins weren't pretty, but shit, he got the job done. He got the job done, and that was what was so special about him. I will, I will always remember Zidane as, as a man who, who was, who had the ability to adapt the team to whatever needed to to be done. I remember many Champions League games during his first term, whenever we had a. We had our wingers out, and, and he was able to play Lucas Vasquez and, and Asensio, or uh, we had center mids out, and he was able to play Kovacic uh, along with Casemiro because both Modric and Tony Cruz were out, and, and he was able to beat teams like PSG, like Bayern Munich. This man, this man had more than just an ability to to put to name players on the starting lineup. He he had a way with tactics, and that's what we're really gonna be able to miss once we once we really don't don't have him out there. Um, Oh man, guys, really sad, really sad. I mean, a season, this season, in which we had to deal with 65 plus injuries, and one of the one of the clubs with the most COVID cases that we had, uh, and he was still able to fight for La Liga till the last day. He was able to take us to the semif semifinals of the Champions League when no one, not even me, would have thought that Real Madrid was capable of making it to the, to the semifinals of the Champions League. That in itself is a huge merit. I don't care that we didn't win zero trophies. I mean, I, I mean obviously I care. Obviously, I always want us to win uh, trophies. But what he did with what he had was already amazing on its own. On its own. His ability to, to win with players that wouldn't have started in any other big team in Europe. Vinicius Jr., Asensio, Odrio Sola whenever we had to play with him. Rodrigo, I could say as well. Isco, Marcelo, all these players would not play in, in, in a big, big, big team in Europe. And he was able to, especially with Vini, who played the majority of the games and still win with, with a player that wasn't, with, frankly, was not scoring for us. I mean, yes, Vini has its great qualities, but, but Vini is a player that did not deliver whenever we, we needed goals from him. And, and Zidane was able to adapt the team via, via like strengthening the defense, making the defense such a solid rock. The, the midfield, to, to be able to, to gel the whole team together, there were there so many ways in which Zidane was able to, to get wins out of us whenever we, no other manager would have. So I, I think, I think um, and it's really sad because people overlook that. People overlook that about him and, and these people include uh, people at Real Madrid. There's there's so much there's so much BS that I'm sure Zidane is leading for which has to do internally with Real Madrid that in instances where they didn't protect them when they showed up they didn't defend them when they showed up and uh, I was kind of pissed whenever I saw Real Madrid's farewell letter to him in which they were you know showing saying how he he's the best thing that ever happened to Real Madrid they're so thankful and I'm like where was all that whenever Zidane truly needed it. Whenever Zidane was receiving all the critics from the media, all the critics from everything, why did Real Madrid not go out there and, and show their full support to him? I don't know, guys, I don't know. But uh, what I do know is that all the fans and all the, uh, the people that run other clubs, they must be celebrating because this is a big win for Barcelona, this is a big win for Atletico Madrid, this is a big win for City, Manchester United, Chelsea, everyone, everyone. Real Madrid not having Zidane is uh, is not a, a good thing. It's not a good thing, but it's a good thing for for the other clubs. But uh, the, the the next thing is how how is this going to affect us as we as we move forward? What uh, you know, truths will start to be revealed as to what happened with Zidane. What will happen to the dressing room? What coaches? What coaches will uh, will take over Real Madrid? What happens with Mbappe? In my opinion, Mbappé, one of Mbappé's big ambitions to come to Real Madrid, he had two big ambitions to come to Real Madrid. One, to play with Cristiano Ronaldo, no longer there. Two, to be under, to be managed by Zinedine Zidane, no longer there. If you're Mbappé, maybe you were waiting out to see what the future for Zidane was going to be. Maybe that was, was going to tip you over from signing a new contract with PSG or going to Real Madrid. I don't know. I don't know. In my opinion, having Zidane was a big factor for pulling over Mbappé to, to, to our team. 
but uh, who knows? In terms of uh, what manager will, will uh, coach us, there's uh, potential players out there, potential coaches out there, and I'm gonna make a whole video dedicated to just the players that, or the, sorry, I keep saying players, to just the managers that could replace Zidane. But uh, amongst those names, we have Raul, which most people seem to be, whenever I was in streams and I would ask you guys, most of you seem to want Raul, um, player, uh, coach like Conte, Pochettino starting to, to, to build a name for, for himself as to, to coming for Real Madrid, so potentially. Allegri was the other option, but Allegri has just uh, agreed to, to join Juventus which I'm kind of happy about, but we're going to go more, more into that in the next video. So make sure you stay on the lookout for that. If you're new to the account, make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date for whenever I release that other video. We have lots of content planned, guys. I know you, have, you guys have been asking. I still need to do my, my uh, season analysis, season review, the player reviews, all that is coming up. We have Euro squad analyses coming up. And of course, once the Euro starts, those live reaction videos are going to be coming coming at you uh, hard and fast. So lots to look forward to. Make sure you subscribe down below, hit the notification bell, like this video, and let me know Let me know what you're gonna remember Sidan as, what you are gonna miss most of him for. Uh, with that being said, guys, I'll see you guys for the next video talking about the managers. And with that being said, a la Madrid. And once again, thank you, Sidan.